to Naga Siren, and Naga Siren falls in the second ban phase. The the Brewmaster Nature's Prophet opening out of Cloud Nine is similar to what Newbie ran very often in the in the international tournament. I would say even in the grand finals, I think they use the opening specifically twice, if not at least the same combo. And usually this lets like a Morphling or an Enigma pick up follow up. But Newbie, they their lineup is nothing to scoff at. I mean the Death Prophet, the Skywrath Mage, top two picks of the of the season at the moment, then Tidehunter, a very potent hero as well, who kind of fell off because people thought it wasn't as good, but still very, very strong as a hero. Yeah, and Death Prophet in particular, that 20 second nerf to the ultimate, it, some thought it would just make it too long of a cooldown, but it really hasn't. It, it feels like she's pretty much the same old Death Prophet, and well, I did cast a couple games yesterday where she was mysteriously, mysteriously ignored. It was in Cloud9 Vici, and two of the games she was ignored, but uh, not this time around. Newbie's more of like your your traditional Chinese team, and they are going to run it here. Yeah. It's hard to pass up Panda, Razor, Death Prophet, and Centaur in the current metagame. And even Batrider, who's made himself the first ban here against, I mean, on the side of Cloud9. Which is kind of odd, but I think uh, I think that basis comes from the fact that they don't like playing Furion into Batrider. Because Batrider is just so amazing against Prophet. You know, Prophet's the hero that, as much farm as he gets, you know, he wants to show himself in the lane to get those lane creeps. And Batrider can not only farm the jungle and the lane, but he can do it without the showing of his presence under the guise of a smoke or something like that. And he can always apply that kind of kill pressure. So them taking that out on the first stage. And here now we have the Razor as the fourth pickup. Again, no real surprises to see this hero coming out. Yeah, this one got hit a bit harder in the last patch. Uh, I think the main one that a lot of people are really looking at is the losing your ultimate if you do die. So uh, you no longer revive the storm through Aegis. And that is a pretty big change, but... On paper, but in practice, yeah. Razor just seems like he doesn't die anyway, so what does it really matter? <laughs> you know, it's, it's ironic to say, but I would say Razor took like a less hit than a Death Prophet. Really? You know, yeah, the thing is, I thought coming to the patch that the ultimate change to Death Prophet is not going to be a big deal either. And mm -hmm. especially with the refresher getting the additional 20 seconds on it, it I guess it kind of adds on some more fuel to the fire. But in essence, this 20 second ultimate, when it comes to like the late late game, if Death Prophet doesn't rush a Refresh Orb as like a fourth slot item, then mm -hmm. what happens is in some sort of base defense scenario after you just push down a mid racks or a tower, you actually don't have Exorcism up. And it makes for very interesting buyback fights. So, and, and you know, buyback fights are obviously very important when it comes to a Spectre hero as well. So it could be a possibility that this 20 second nerf could come into play here. Yeah, and well, when we're talking about late game, can't forget this one. Spectre picked up fourth. In 6.82, it was probably a first pick, and 6.82B, uh, definitely still a strong hero. And with this, Newbie can certainly take it late. It also goes great against Blink Dagger Initiators, and we've got two of them, Brewmaster and Sand King. So, Claire, this is a hero that could cause a lot of problems for Cloud9 when they're trying to take teamfights. Yeah, although I, I do favor the Razor in the overall engagement, because this Razor hero when you get the when you get to the late game like how specter carries a game is somewhat similar to naga you just you first of all you pick the fights you want and secondly you fight with an advantage always because you have these illusions that are hitting the enemy heroes in terms of single target focus they're not the strongest and what happens with a razor with agonims and refresher is that the haunt illusions actually die so fast and at the same time the specter that reality is into the razor just melts also because he gets armor shredded, and even though he's reflecting some of the damage, it's just not enough to deal with a like a four or five slot razor. Right. So yeah, it's 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 hard to say at the moment, but I would favor Cloud 9s lineup so far. Okay. Well, newbie still needing that second support here as we go into the last set of picks. They ban out the AUI 2000 Enigma, which has been fantastic for a long time, and would certainly give them team fight supremacy if they get the black hole off. So Cloud 9. Uh, we'll see if they want to go a different direction. We did see the, the return of the jungle heroes in that, that Alliance Cloud9 match. I didn't actually get to watch it because I ended up crashing after a 10-hour cast, but <laughs> I heard there was some uh, Chen Enchantress action. and uh, Well, there is still a Chen out there if Cloud9 want to go for it, but generally we've seen the Enchantress is more popular, even with that new Chen eggs. Yeah, you know, it's somewhat of a side note, but I remember speaking to Burning at TI3 just after they lost their game against Alliance in the winner's bracket. Uh, I approached him and I said, what went wrong? He said, Spectre and Chen are not very good together. So in the case that Chen wants to come out, it probably shouldn't be on the side of Newbie, or if the Chinese think alike, then that's probably the case. Yeah. But Shadow Demon is picked up by Cloud9, and all of a sudden, this hero, in conjunction with Nature's Prophet and Sand King, is just a really good overall walk-around-the-map support hero. It's also Applies... really good against Spectre. 
yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty decent against Spectre, and and I guess the main thing is that the any target that gets initiated on, like if the Skywrath tries to burst them down with the Mystic Flare and Ancient Seal, you can just put them under, and they would mitigate the damage. Yeah, so newbie, bit light on stuns, Claire. I think that's kind of my main concern here. Like, do they need an Earthshaker type hero? They they currently have Ravage. That's it. Es would be good. Okay. Uh, I personally don't like Tidehunter and and Earthshaker together. But ES is like one of the best heroes right now for their lineup to work with the Skywrath. Newbie have also ran the Lich with the Spectre, and it was actually a TI4 against EG. So they could very well look into that option. But again, that kind of thing is very lane committed. And Cloud9 is one of those teams that, even though they don't do too hot in the laning stages, always have like a trump when it comes to the mid game because they like to split push. And yeah, you know what? They actually took the Lich. Huh? Good this call. is a lock in pick. Every time I see this situation with Newbie, it either, it either succeeds super hard or falls flat on its face, and I guess we'll have to see another demonstration of that here today. Yeah, most commonly we've seen it with the Morphling, but, well... Yeah. It's a bit stronger, I guess, in some ways. Oh no, don't give me connection problems. It's a bit stronger in this patch, with the, the Frost Armor working fully against range heroes, not half. Uh, at the same time, a lot of Razor's damage is... In fact, most of it is going to be his ultimate, when he gets, especially yeah. when he gets Refresher. And Profit, yeah, there's decent right-click there, but... The Frost Armor won't be amazingly effective. There's nothing... I guess there's there's nothing really important to cancel with the... There's no, like, Black Hole to cancel with a Chain Frost. So I think, just to echo your point, like, going through what else Lich can offer, there's really not much except lane dominance. Exactly, exactly. It's it's such a lock-in pick for the current metagame. And uh, as we've seen it with Lich Morphlings, it does work, given the right scenario. But I do question if this is the right scenario that Newbie have set, set up for themselves. You know, they have the Death Prophet and they have the Time Hunter, so their team fight is stellar. Uh... Everything gets enhanced in that respect with the with the Spectre pickup, but again, Cloud Nine, you know, if they can survive the laning phase here. Are the players moving for you? Because I think I'm lagging. Are you in the Are you in the game? Claire. I'm still dropping all my frames. All right, I think we're back. All right, hello everybody. Uh, do apologize for just a little internet hiccup, it looks like. So hopefully we didn't mess anything. Let's get clairvoyance back on the line real quickly. Oh boy. WCA is, it's not only, it's just bad luck, man. It's just bad luck. All right. Okay, Claire, uh, are you with me? Oh, he's not picking up yet. And I'm not sure if I'm actually going to reconnect. We have to restart Dota 2. I think you guys are out there. I think you can hear me. I'm not sure, though. Hello. I'm trying to reload into the game, guys. Uh, I thought it was Perfect World, but it seems it was actually our internet having a hiccup, so... We seem to be back for now, but I'm not in the server. All right, I think Dota just crashed. Yep, that's a Dota crash. Let's try this again. World-class action indeed. That is the perfect WCA acronym. Oh my, thank you for your patience, guys. We really do apologize for these outages. This one's on us or on Verizon anyway, but yeah, let's let's try this reconnect one more time. Um, 
Yeah, I would be cast. I would be talking about the game, but uh, well, I don't even remember what the the draft was to be honest. Okay, let's see. So Spectre Death Prophet. All right, we're back in. We're back in. We did not miss the first blood. Thank God for that. We have game audio. Hopefully, we'll get clear voids back in a second. And let's see. Anyone about to die? All right. Just saying, Jet actually being pursued out with three poison sacks. Pilot, I really committed for this. This could end up being your first blood. There's a slowdown for the concussive shot. There's no lich nukes. He has boots first. I don't think they get this kill. Still pursuing Pilot die out and I'm looking for the opening. All right, Pilot die. Not gonna fight a haster. So he gets his get out of jail free card. Another nuke coming in, but at the buzzer he'll end up escaping. All right, clairvoyance, you with me? No, he's not with me. Okay, let's run through the lives real quickly. And uh, introduce our players here. So on the Radiant side, we have How is the, the Offlane Spectre currently. I think they're trying to dodge some lane matchups here. Moot will be playing your Death Prophet mid. That puts Banana onto the Lich, who did for was forced to TP down just to save Sangshine's life. Sangshine hitting that Scarf Mage. In the bottom lane, we'll go Rabbit as your Tidehunter. The, the new addition of this newbie squad. Filling some big shoes as far as Director 8s go, but doing his best. Bone 7 will be your Offlane Nature's Prophet. Looks like he's going to be going for those early Null Tallies in the Blade Mail build. That puts Fada on the mid lane Brewmaster. Back to the well will be Pylai Die on the Shadow Demon. And then top lane, Eternal Envy playing that Razor. He's stealing a lot of damage here. He's basically 1v2ing these heroes are winning. And that does leave AUI 2000 as your Sand King. Hey. Uh, just a question. Yes. So when you DC and then I'm here and, and I'm talking and you're talking through your stream does that mean like both our voices kind of go through dota tv yes people in dota tv are probably listening to two separate people <laughs> like hey you there you hey you there over you the whole time for a minute or two <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty oh, much man. what just happened we we apologize right, on, that, that's not on me dude that's on internet please no internet, that's please. that's on you claire come on you pick up no, the phone China. pick up the damn phone <laughs> No, um, I'm we, we do that. really apologize to everyone in Dota TV. Although, to be honest, uh, from what I've heard, it's pretty bad in general anyway, and the dreaded pause begins. I do I do wonder, um, every time I checked out these WCA games on Dota TV, it, it sounded like uh, your mic was on a robot robot thing, you know? Is yeah, that, that seems to be happening a lot with the, the Chinese servers. Ah, uh, okay. It's I think it's a routing again, huh? issue with Perfect World. <laughs> Perfect world, not so perfect, LD. Last I talked to Valve, which granted was like, about it, which was like... I mean, I initially brought it up to them, like, I think it was almost two years ago when we started... We started casting uh, G1 League in two, end of 2012. Uh, oh, man, of 2013. So yeah, this was like this was like when no Western Western broadcasts just never streamed Chinese tournaments. I think Falat did a handful of times, but that was like an audio cast and you know, way back mm -hmm. in the day. So generally they weren't streamed live, but this was the one of the first few, and... Well, the routing was even worse then, and it's gotten slightly better, but end of the day, it's... From what I understand, Valve would basically have to get their own line into China that, like, bypasses all the normal exchanges, you know, of the networks, and... Oh, good luck. Yeah, and as you can imagine, in China, there's some polit politics involved there. It's not just like, oh, we just need to run a cable, you know? It's... You gotta pay, oh, no, bribe good. off uh, people all the way, all up and down the chain, from what I understand. Yeah. Not saying they would actually do that, but, you know, it's complicated, mm -hmm. man. It's complicated. The Great Wall of China, dude. The Great Firewall of China. There's more than one Great Wall. Mm -hmm. All right, wrong. Claire. So we've missed like the first few minutes. Didn't miss a first blood, although Pilot Die was going ham and almost got a, a solo first blood on the enemy Skywrath of all heroes. But yeah. how, are, how are these lanes looking for you so far? I think they're going somewhat even, I would have to say. I think Bone 7 could have got a little bit more CS uh, considering all things. But uh, now what's going to happen is he won't be able to do any damage to the Tidehunter. At the same time, though, there is a wave, double wave of six creeps pushing in. So let's see if he can pick up two or three here. Yeah, so I guess we'll see the the, the early Null Tally stacking up quite soon. Oh, Moo, getting caught out, will be clapped. There is no disruption, though. Pilot are only level one, but he's stacking up the poison. Bottle charge is going through. They'll need one more poison here. Is it going to be enough? It's close. Oh, Not so quite. Close. 30 HP, but now the turn might come. Pilot die in trouble. Nukes come in for the Scarf Mage. No concussive shot. They'll need two more nukes. Uh, and gets clapped. This could be Fada getting Dang. the first blood. It will be. As Bone Sever rotates in, but Fada with the big crits to secure that. Yeah. Pilot die doing what he does best. Walking around the map and creating space. Yeah, and it's just a, a level one boot shadow demon that's that's setting up those kills too. There's no soul catcher, there's no disruption, just just the shadow poison. But it gets three, four stacks, and the nice thing is it prevents you from bottling too much in these early ganks. Like if you try to use those charges, you take another poison stack and it just gets cancelled constantly, so uh, might have led to the kill there. I'm just gonna see AUI trying to jungle though. 
And it seems newbie don't want to allow this. Going in for the last hits. Even Nuki, the creeps, to try and secure them. But he's proving to be a nuisance here on this support sand king. And yep. he has started stacking his jungle as well. Which is good. Again, the reason why this combo with the Shadow Demon is so good with the Sand King is that uh, heroes like Skyrath and Shadow Demon, they can just leave the lane. And that's probably after they've either done the zoning work that they had to do as supports or just apply kill pressure elsewhere. And then the Sand King just gets free reign over the jungle or can follow suit with his portal strike. And Skyrath and Shadow Demon have decent initiation. Shadow Demon, much superior. Oh man, them. that Ravage bottom lane. They're going to give Hal the last hit as well. Rabbit uses the first Ravage. one. Wow, already. Yeah, he, he had no hesitation about using that on Bone 7, and it seems they kind of wanted to combo it with a potential lane swap. They're going to send the Tidehunter into the woods and give the Spectre this lane, and they'll just leave Banana Top to... Oh, Bruce Split was used, and they're diving to mid lane. Disruption's here, Shadow Poison can stack up Moo, perfectly surrounded by the Disruption Illusions, his own creeps working against him as well. Oh, that hurts. He'll end up going down, and do they get any sort of trade? Bone 7 and Newt Banana will cross paths, but it's really about Fada who just... TP's out, and Bone 7 just struts away. Double no tallies online, boys. Yeah, the second one and third to probably come sometime soon. But I'm... it will be the infamous Blade Mail build. Yeah, he loves this build. I don't think I've seen him go anything else since he started doing it. That's the thing. I, I spoke to him about it a little bit, and he, he agrees that it's not an every game thing, but he actually just makes it every game. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. Like I'm not sure what he's thinking. It might, it's just his, it's his, comfort, it's his comfort food of a yeah. build, you know? It's like, ah, I just feel safe with the Nultalis. It's like that, mm. bl like the, the blankie that some kids have when they're growing up and, you know, <laughs> they can't go to sleep without their blankie. The Nultalis have yeah. become Bone7's blankie in Dota 2. Yeah, after, after so much troubles with the US, you know, you, you want to be comfortable in China at least. Uh, I don't know if there's any comfort to be had with this tournament. The hotel did look really nice. I saw some pictures of it from the... The former Titan manager, Oling, but I don't know if that makes up for the the, the fourteen hour days that Cloud Nine <laughs> have had. The boys when they come back from the land. So how was the land? Oh, the hotels were nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right. So what are we looking at here? Free farm on Eternal Envy being traded for free farm on a Death Prophet mid. Your Brew's doing pretty well. Safe laner of the Tide got off the early level six. Now Rapids in the off lane. Fairly even trades across the board so far. Cloud9 up a thousand gold and 750 experience, and a lot of this is probably going to come down to uh, just AUI being able to farm the stacks later on. Is they already have a double stack here? Uh, we see Bone Seven uh, on a secondary stack, although it involves Mud Golems over here. So a nice lead for Cloud9 early on, but they are running this Spectre, and that's not going to make your lanes any easier. Mm -hmm. Probably still sapping ASP at the bottom lane, and it could very well happen that he gets initiated on as how is level six and there are no supports in sight but i'm not sure if cloud nine are aware on the other hand eternal envy has rotated to the bottom lane looks like they want oh, to spot the, the trap is sprung moose just bait panda split was used he tries to tp out will they be able to stop this tp in time it looks like they did i didn't get an animation for anything but moose still retreating juking through the trees they're gonna gush the fire panda to try to keep him safe fire panda will fall earth panda retreating out banana in pursuit of that one and how will commit but there's a boulder toss oh he almost got Baited under the tower with the boulder toss, but in the end, it's a Bruce split, a Ravage, and only a Prophet barely dying, but it was a four hero commitment from Newbie for that. And meanwhile, Cloud9 tried to set up bottom lane, but the Spectre just haunted and dodged it. How? No, he's he's baiting with his magic stick. He'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Makes me really question that movement coming out of Eternal Envy to the bottom lane, though. I mean, for one, I don't think they could have landed a kill on Spectre anyway. But for another, the fact that he TP'd bottom means that Newbie could have that kind of fight at mid lane with no real scare. Because Razor coming into that fight with a huge plasma field might have changed things. As I say that though, this is a level 8 Razor with not a single point in plasma field. Huh. What do you what do you make of that? It's it's one of those Cloud9 things because they theory craft a lot with the optimal item builds and the most efficiency on some games. And you look at this game and you say, okay, there's a Skyrath, there's a Lich, there's a Tide. All those heroes who have these this nuke potential and slow slash catch that comes out of their gank abilities are all single target. So why don't you just purge them up and then you just run away? Oh, but, AUI. I mean, this is heavy commitment though. He's gotta be careful. Uh, They're gonna go on him. Oh my goodness, he melts. They actually didn't level up Desolate. Maybe not enough. Oh, just barely. Only has the level one Desolate. Bit unusual to be yeah. honest. He does a lot of damage with that base boots, I must say. So, it, there is a lot of single target nuke here, I guess, from, from Newbie. And that does make the Razor's Passive very powerful. 
Mm -hmm. Although I I would imagine, I mean, you go with this Ring of Aquila pickup and suddenly, unless you're casting your nuke, I'm not really sure about the purpose of finishing the item. I mean, it is it is slot efficient to finish it because it's so good for the price. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think you should get some points in nuke for sure. Sign chain forced to TP out by a potential profit teleport, but it was actually cancelled. So this will allow Pilot to secure your illusion on top, and meanwhile it makes the move towards Hal does not have the demonic purge so will be a fairly difficult kill here on the specter no epicenter online either AOI just focusing on his early economy with the three points in sandstorm the leveled up burrow strike and wants to rush that blink dagger so doesn't really have the mana pool to support early epicenter usage and eternal envy i mean true to form claire he likes to roam early more than almost any other one position player yeah he does he likes to give space to his team but a lot of times it hurts him, and I think this is one of those cases. I mean, he probably wouldn't have had too much more farm anywhere he went, but the fact that he's walking around open, open in daylight, it's it's making the enemy feel a lot more comfortable, and it just I don't know, it kind of just gave away cards. So, so let me not having the nuke, it's it hinders his ability to clear the creep wave and really maintain presence in the lane. So long as some of these single target heroes are missing, even with the high levels and unstable current. Yeah, one of the things we have seen a lot from Razors and Death Prophets is just farming stacks in the jungle with, with that leveled up nuke. Um, yeah. You stack the big it's hit so a few good. times, you, you you can clear that in like, I don't know, two, three plasma fields, depending on how much right-click damage you have. Yeah. So it will slow down his farm a bit, but it is giving a lot of levels to AUI 2000. He's already hit seven in the top lane in 11 and a half minutes. You compare that to the other supports in this game, they're all five. And that's including a Lich, who... It's very under-leveled, to be honest. Eleven and a half, you're almost, you almost just get level six from Denies. But somehow he hasn't found it yet. Well, just got it now. Yep. He has picked it up. Of course, no levels in Ice Armor yet. But uh, eventually, we'll, we will see the impact of it. Uh, especially against a hero like Razor, who doesn't want to be slowed up in the fights. Again, though, not too sure how impactful it will be. And in the meantime, Pilot that top lane. Oh, you are oh. so dead, Pilot. It <laughs> goes down. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the top rune, just to deny on this bounty rune for Moo, and... That will prompt Fada to blink away back towards mid. He's already got his blink, though. Very early blink for him. The Sand King of AUI getting close to his own. Yeah, they looks like they want to kill the Lich at bottom or at least pressure the tower. They'll have to commit something. Fada's probably going to finish his treads at the side shop here, and there it is. He's going to be able to clap out the next wave, and Eternal Envy still has no points in the nuke, but about to crack level 9. So we'll see if he wants to get his first point or just go with a max up build on the unstable current. In the meantime, mid lane, Exorcism has been casted. Nice move here by Banana. Just knowing that when they show three heroes like this, either Cloud9 are going to come fight mid, in which case his Chain Frost will be needed, or they're going to be ganking him bottom. And well, Either way, he rotates off of it. But Fada will return to the lane. Tower nearly dead, not finished off yet. They do have Haunt online. Drum's about to be picked up by Hao. Not the best farm, but considering all the rotations, oh, not too bad. Bruce split used very early. Moo, being pursued a bit here. Razor can join the fray as well. Even an epicenter from AUI, but the Ravage prevents further chase. Moo's gonna turn with this nuke. He may end up going down to the boulder toss. The additional auto attack damage. They need an anchor smash here to keep him safe. Moo will be fine. An overcommitment. AUI 2000 ends up going down. Revealed his blink dagger in that process as well. And it cost them a Bruce split to boot in exchange for the Ravage. Now Fada trying to TP out. Oh, they it's gonna get cancelled, I think. They have a chain frost. Oh no. It's a secondary death, and it's on a very highly leveled hero in the brew and suddenly three heroes of newbie are level nine on the back of that fight yeah that was a that was a really really critical turnaround i think the nice thing about that commitment is that cloud nine did manage to save the mid tower but it's just one of those situations you say at what cost eternal envy still scraping up every little bit he can find and he has picked up the drums on his razor now probably gonna move out from a courier soon or as as i say that looks like he wants to heal up the 300 life points that he's missing at the fountain but in terms of objectives, Cloud9, when you lose that kind of fight against the Spectre, you feel really, really pressured and you start panicking to try and do something. So I wonder if they're going to fall into that void, into that bait, and put themselves in a worse situation, or if they're going to just settle down, relax, and say, hey, let's wait for the Brewmaster ulti to come again, and we'll try with the Razor next time. Yeah, they'll have their Blade blade mount soon on the Nature's Prophet, which can just completely melt Saint Chain if he's not careful. and. Well, to go with that, Eternal Envy picks up drums. Uh, they've got the double blinks online. So basically, everyone's got their items for this stage of the game. Nobody's trying to go greedy. No Midas is picked up. Nobody really too focused on farming. Uh, they'll get their farm, but they are ready to fight now as soon as the ults cool down. So. Whereas you look at Newbie, your Spectre is building that way as well with phase boots and drums. But obviously, a hero that wants to come online more. Moose still hasn't completed 
his Yule Scepter at 15 minutes, and outside of that, they do have the Blink on Tide. Those are pretty much the main pickups so far. Yeah, gonna push a post-level 6 death on Death Prophet really, really hurts Yule's progression. But the tower is getting forced out here. I don't know if they can't really defend this. No Bruce Blade for 15, no, they're just no gonna have to sack the tier 1. And I don't think they get this trade. Well, there's nothing to trade for. Well, they're setting up top lane, looking for go. Dagger will come through AUI. In position with an epicenter ready, but Hal is very nervous about this gank, and you can just see how far back he's sitting. Still, it's nighttime. They have an observer ward over here, but I'm not sure if he saw these heroes walk up into the lane. I don't think so. He's kind of, Oh, he's he's in the danger zone. Purge to start. Disruption to follow. The soul catcher can follow this up, and it's an epi. Hot, the burrow strike through, and no chance for Hal. Great shade stun. Now Claw Knight on the retreat out. Concussive shot slowing yeah. down the Shadow Demon. They're going to work on Pylai Die. Mystic Flare used this whole one more nuke would do him in. Nothing AUI can do but watch his buddy die. And they tried to smoke <laughs> yeah, to smoke. save him. <laughs> well, yep. didn't end up working out. But I go think they're just going to reinitiate. Yeah, there it is. All right. Not too shabby. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Yeah, no, nothing more there. Rabbit just getting harassed a bit by Eternal Envy. Ooh, I think they might want to commit. No, Eternal Envy pops the jumps. Realizes the sense of urgency. Oh man, they but have Ravage. He doesn't really have that much static link damage either, so they can dive this Razor if they want to. Drum charge use. AUI rotating in now. He has a Burrow Strike just getting the Mana Fort there, and they pop a Dust as well, but no Mystic Flare to follow this up. So it's a Ravage and a Haunt for absolutely nothing from Newbie. They get Zilch mm -hmm. there. Yeah, really, really nice move by AUI there, TPing in, and even with just a small stun, it gives enough presence to give Newbie the awareness saying that if we commit deeper, we might actually lose heroes. And of course, Hao was already taking some damage from Eye of the Storm, which means his armor was getting shredded. Not a, not a place you want to be with Spectre after haunting to commit for a kill. That's and Spectre just pay attention to the build to LD, like this Spectre build. It's not the same as the ones that the Western scene does. The Western scene always goes to two the spectral earned. dagger max. Oh, the uh, the skill build you're saying? Okay. Yeah, 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 that's right. And then and then they max desolate first, and then they have like one to two points in dispersion, and then you can either rotate between dagger or dispersion. But desolate seems to be the priority because it synergizes best with haunt, and you can make the most use of it by realitying into the different illusions through haunt. Yeah, he's actually only gone for two points of Desolate, and it does level up Dispersion, which it used to be the go-to build, but Desolate got buffed pretty hard, a, I don't know, a year ago or something, and, and ever since then, it's mainly been Desolate, sometimes Dagger, but yeah, rarely rarely do we see the Dispersion leveled up over the, over that, but they're going to go in now top lane onto how He has picked up a Vitality Booster, he's very tanky, they'll use a Bruce Split for this, he jukes through the trees, Burrow Strike there to greet him. It's a pretty big commitment here, and they'll get that Spectre kill. But reinforcements are arriving. Moo into the front front lines. He's got a Yule Scepter ready to go, and he's invis. Who's he going to go on? I think he's waiting for this brute. No, throws out the nuke. Boulder Toss can come through and prevent that follow-up. They've got to prevent Bone Seven's TP out. They'll silence a Mystic Flare secures the kill. But the Epi from AUI, he was ready to counter-initiate. Newbie take the bait. Hulk Line and Taker. Now they're just going to TP out. AUI can't cancel that one fast enough. Even the Courier nearly going down. Now it's got to hide in the tree line up to the cliffs. Run, gentle courier. Can't even see it. It's so far off the map, and Fada's still trying to hunt it down. And this will this will free them up to fight mid. They basically took yeah. a three v five and one while they're pushing the middle lane. Yeah, and honestly, I think newbie are going to continue to get the uh, continue to find themselves getting juggled around. Mu coming in mid, and Haunt does get casted. Here we go. Going on to pilot died. Nice silence to prevent any sort of defensive disruption, and they'll at least get one return kill here. So finally, the Spectre getting something with a Haunt, but. He's been three, he's three toed six, but it really doesn't feel like he's had that much impact. And, well, his farm has certainly been shut down. Only 60 CS at 19 minutes in. Cloud9 knowing Haunt is down. Are gonna try and sneak a Roshan here, but it will not be very fast. Yeah, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure if they even want to commit to this, honestly. They're gonna push mid instead. Exorcism's here for the tier two, and. Yeah, they, they should back. They should back out of this for sure. It's gonna take way too long. Yeah, Eternal Envy's thought better of it. But he's only got a level 2 Plasma Field for the team fight. He's just gonna pop the ult, start charging it, and they'll focus on Mu with the Exorcism online. He gets thrown up in the air right as the counter initiating Ravage comes in, but Mu still ends up dropping Chain Frost. He's in Fado one more time. He gets put under by Pylidai, keeping him alive. While Rabbit and Banana retreat up the hill, they've already lost two. Meanwhile, AOI 2000 Fada scurrying to dodge away from that Chain Frost bounce, and well, they'll end up surviving with no Spectre Haunt. This is not really a fight they can look to take, and now if they want to go rush, well. A lot of ults were just used, so it could be a potential opportunity. 
Actually, despite the initiation coming out of Cloud9, Newbie had an opportunity to turn the fight there. And I think it, it, it was on Sanshin's hands. What happened was Sanshin casted one of the spells on, I believe, Razor, and he got slowed up a bit. But he didn't follow up with the Mystic Flare on the Ravaged Razor. And Razor was sitting at like sub 400 life points, just like 390 or something. So Razor would have actually gotten bursted down while Mu was up in the air with his Yield Scepter. And when Mu came down, without the Razor's initial damage or instant damage, the Magic Wand would have come out as well, and he might have been able to walk out with his extra movement speed. It, which is, it's kind of doubtful, but the Razor kill was huge there. And, and the fact that Sanshin didn't get his Mystic Flare off is, is quite costly at this point. Yeah, it's newbie are a very ultimate reliant team. Like your only hero that can reliably take fights without his ult is probably the Scarth Mage. He still offers quite a bit. It's still an important yeah. ult, but hey, one minute cooldown's not too shabby. But you look at everyone else, Claire, and these are big cooldown ultimates. Spectral ult, two two minutes at all levels. The Death Prophet, 135 seconds. Your Tide Hunter, uh, around two minutes as well, 150. So two and a half to be exact. And of course, Chain Frost. It's one minute when you get the level three ult, but for now, it's it's over a two minute ult as well. It's if they waste their ults, they really can't do anything to Cloud9. No, they really can't. As a matter of fact, the fact that Hao had to commit to an early Vitality Booster, as efficient and nice it is for Spectre to get this early HP, for Spectre to work in these kind of games, she has to snowball really hard. Uh, again, you don't really want to go into a late game Razor with a Spectre, it just, it just doesn't work. So, it's unfortunate, but they will have to get something done yet again. And Haunt is available, so I think I'm not sure if they even want to wait out the Ravage, but they can very well do so as it's only about 20 seconds left. And and Rabbit is on his way to a mech, so I think their team fight's going to be enhanced in the next engagement. Yeah, the mech seems pretty big. He's only, what, 500 gold off, so he'll have the yeah. mech soon. Spectre about halfway to the Relic, a little bit more. If they take a good fight with the mech Ravage haunt combo, then we're potentially looking at how just having this Relic. It's not the fastest, but... It's not a it's not a pure one position specter. You've got Mu to assist on the Death Prophet, and if he can manage to pick up his farm, he's actually done really well so far. 8k net worth, and he could be very relevant later on. He's, oh, he's got an Ogre Club study on the career. That's where the extra gold yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering that too. I mean, he's actually got the highest CS in the game, but his inventory does not show for it at all. Yeah, he's got some gold in his stash, uh, 1300 to be exact, and yeah, with the Ogre Club, BKB is coming soon. And against Cloud9, the only hero who has many answers for this is, is just Eraser. Mm -hmm. More than enough, though, I would say. He has a playmill, and I'm not sure if he wants to commit to a Shiva so early, but he could very well do so. I mean, he does have a significant level of advantage against the enemy team right now, and he has the Aegis to fall back on. So if you just apply an AoE slow, we've seen AUI come with this huge epicenter, just taking over the team fights and doing all the burst damage necessary after the Boral Strike follow-up. So it could very well just be relying on some of his supports to shout that extra damage. And of course, Bone7 with the Blade Mail. Can't forget that build, LD. <laughs> he's had it for some time. And yeah. What, what's this? Is this just a four staff he's working on? A Necrobook? What are, you, what are you expecting from Bone? I would imagine a Necrobook. I, I actually don't know. Okay. I've never seen him build four staff with this build before. When you see all those null tallies, you, your mind always goes to Dagon, but uh, I'm not expecting it this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see the null talisman above, the staff of wizardry below. He's just taunting Suddenly. us. Like, come on, man. Where's that Dagon rush? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. They killed Tinker so hard this patch. Oh, I wish it was played some more. Did you see the game where IG tried to run it? They, what happened? They, they hadn't read the patch notes, because in iLeague, they dropped the patch, dropped it like, in the middle of the land finals. Like, one day it's 6.81, next day it's 6.82. And they started stacking Ancients when, like, when the game began. They stacked oh, them once. Oh, oh, that must look silly. And then I'm pretty sure someone on the team is like, you realize that doesn't work anymore, right? And then they stopped stacking them. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty oh, funny. Man. Yeah, he does rush the Shivas. So he's at 1.4k light points with, uh, with his power treads swapped onto strength. He's really fair enough. He's really the only Razor player I see rush a Shivas. Like, it's almost always either BKB or, or occasionally your Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, it'll work this game though. I mean, given the position that he's in, again, he's one of the highest levels in the game and he has the Aegis to fall back on, so even if he makes a mistake and overextends slightly, all he does is just slow up everybody and offer that presence as the Razor should be doing. Yeah, Banana has picked up an early headdress. Uh, he's had it for a while, and I guess we'll see him work towards a pipe for this team if the game goes on. And For now, some casual regen for himself. Still, it's all about how. He's been unable to offer too much in the real engagements, and he'll need this Relic of Radiance to remain relevant. He's getting close to the Relic, but they're forced to park three heroes just to sit near him while, while Mu has to take the risk and head out to the bottom lane with no support whatsoever. 
You can just see the wards yeah. that Cloud Knight have gotten out. They have this ward up on the hill, Claire. They had one here near the tower earlier, and they've just had complete map control for the past, like, five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it changing too soon unless Newbie decide to go for, like, a YOLO smoke can kind of thing. Of course, this is a Chinese team, and because they usually rotate early on the map very often, they, like, a lot of times you see these Chinese teams at 20 minutes, they really want to smoke, but they don't have it anymore. It, it hurts their play. They do have two, though. They have one on the tide and one in the stash, so... Or in oh, the shop, okay. so... They, they have sufficient numbers this game. It's good. Yeah, I guess they're waiting for those items. The BKB is now on the Death Prophet. Uh, they probably want to wait out the, the Aegis of Eternal Envy, which is expiring fairly soon. He's also... He also is very uh, liberal with his ultimate usage. It's something that most Razor players tend to reserve for fights, but... Envy loves using this just to accelerate his farm. <laughs> it's it's interesting, like, it's just something that you really don't see too often from other Razor players. Yeah, f funny story, like, just as we were at International, uh, we started talking about the potential of picking Razor first, because, I mean, it, it was just when the wave of Razor hit, and it was like Razor DP. DP wasn't picked as often, it was more like Razor Skywrath Void getting picked first every game with Rasta. But the... Uh, just at one point in the international, MV came up to me and said, "Yo, I th guy, I think, uh, I think I'm the best razor player in the world now. Nobody farms the jungle like I do with my ultimate." <laughs> and I just cracked up laughing. Like, oh my god, dude, you are so eternal, MV, dude. I can't, I can't fathom. The... O only he looks at that as like a, a excellent farming spell as the the primary yeah, yeah, yeah. reason to use it. <laughs> I mean, he's one of those guys, though. He, you have to admit, the the way he thinks is certainly very unique, and he offers a lot to the game. Yeah, him, him and AUI. Nine. Him and AUI. Yeah, him and AUI. Oh, man. This team will be a different team without them. That's for sure. They're still not ready Theory to smoke, crackers. though. Yeah, they're, they're, the Aegis has expired now, and for Newbie, it's all about the Radiance. Once they get this, they, there's really no one item you can look to be like, that's the item that just breaks the game open for them. From there, it's just a slow and steady climb. You get, like, your Yasha up on the Spectre, your Heart, your Manta eventually, but these are not items that just come out overnight. Moo, BKB out, can work towards the Shivas, the heart of his own, but at the same time, Cloud9, if if they don't want to, if they're content to just spread the map and split push, then it's going to be map control still headed their way. They've got the aggressive observer ward out, the, constantly the nature's profit pushing the lanes in. AUI's been keeping up with his farm quite nicely, and now it works towards an Ags or a BKB, which, if he gets the BKB, there's only one way to stop his epicenter from going off, and, and that's a chain for us. Not something yeah. you're likely to see. And most importantly, the fact that he doesn't take extra damage from Spectre helps a lot because this haunt, usually you can expect heroes like Shadow Demon to kind of just crumble. So all he can get off is like one rotation of his kit, maybe just disrupt somebody, ally or enemy, and drop a Soul Catcher with the Demonic Purge follow up, and maybe drop like a Poison or two stacks. Unless he's very, very far away from the team fight, which he can just smoke and run away from the illusion. But overall, Spectre is just a real nuisance to a lot of these single target supports that don't have the mobility or the jump. They need to escape the illusion. Yeah, they have three blinks, but Ravage oh, bottom lane Andy. straight onto Eternal Envy. Disruption's there, but it might be a bit too late. Exorcism on top of him. The brain and fought as well. Bit laggy for Perfect World, but they get the Envy kill off the bat. Dead for a minute. No buyback forthcoming. They'll lose their Shadow Demon too. Already two heroes hitting the deck. Chain Frost pouncing shreds the Fire Panda, but of course does nothing to the Earth Wall. Meanwhile, Epicenter comes through. That's on two from AUI 2000. Bringing them low. Turns the fight in their favor. Now four fallen Fauna. Looking for that blink in. Gets it off the clap first and. I don't know if they get this last kill. They're going to Drunken Haze and try for Pursuit. AUI a bit short on the Burrow Strike. Yeah, now quite the short. Silence. But they bring in Boat 7. TP over the top. The Ghost Return at the exact moment needed. Now he tries for a TP out. Silence on AUI. And I, I think I'm like two seconds behind you. Yeah. Uh, won't, be able to, won't be able to Burrow Strike him there. Yeah. Oh, I actually just called it because it came off cooldown right away. And I, I figured that's what he was going to go for. But that kind of intuition in that high panic situation. This is why this Moo guy is such a player. He... He really deserves his title as one of the best mid laners. He's so clutch overall. Yeah, unfortunately, AUI was just a bit more clutch in that fight. They end up getting four kills, and that's with their biggest source of damage dead off the bat. Razor just killed off before he can do a thing, and well, that is a concern. At the same time, fortunately, no objectives were were claimed. For if you're a newbie fan, they managed to hold the tower for now. How does have his radiance online and? He's 4, 3, and 7. He's only had one more death since he started building this relic, and well, Bone 7 will try to go on him with the blade now, but they'll need more reinforcements for this. They're bringing them in now. Vada in, dagger forward, and then Hal heads to the right, but oh, is he going to be able to get anywhere he wants to? Nope. Oh, oh Hal, off the path of the dagger too long. Now forced to haunt. Where is he going to relocate to? Um, nowhere. Yeah, he's just going to go down. Yeah, that's that's probably a tower push follow-up here. They probably know that Ravage is not available yet, 
and of course Razor's farming up the enemy ancients here, but does still have sufficient spells to rotate, and of course I have the storm relatively low cooldown on that spell. Oh, Envy, not again, my friend. They blink in, he does have his BK, oh no, actually he doesn't, no, he hasn't finished yet. He's in trouble. Oh, Envy. That efficiency. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty pretty. That efficiency. <laughs> Yep, farming any, any any <laughs> By himself, where his team's just made a go on the Spectre, when they have no ward up here, no sentry to tell if there's a, a newbie ward. Yeah. <laughs> I think he I was just assuming... He actually watched the replay. I think he was just assuming newbie were already, like, TP'd into this tower to try to help the Spectre, but that was not the case. Yeah. Uh, him and his odd infatuation for ancient stacks. He just sees them and like, they look like triple the gold to Envy that they do to any yeah. other carry player. <laughs> he likes that gold. Oh man. Well, it often pays off beautifully. Newbie will spoke now. And they're gonna make a move. They've got Exorcism online. Uh, yeah, Spectre did not actually have Haunt in that fight. I'm just getting incredible visual lag and thought I, thought I saw it, but I did. So they have it ready now for the Rochin pit. And they're gonna make their way in. Rapid and move. Oh, bone seven. In position. Yeah, they're but... ruin he's ruining Newbie's plans here. Oh, bo oh. Oh, bone seven. Oh, gosh. He's just trolling them now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows. There, there's no they're just going to say, that. screw it, man. Exorcism used. They are still smoked up. And now they start auto tagging rush. All right, Jig's up to Cloud9 fight this one. They've got all their ultimates as well. BKP is online for your Sand King, so they can't easily stop this Epicenter initiation. Unless the Illusion actually gets off an auto attack in time. Haunts used preemptively as Rose drops all. They'll claim the Aegis, but now they got to get out. And it looks like they will. Well, well timed taunt there. Cloud9 just unable to get in. They're gonna try know, for this. Like they They're gonna try. Burrow Strike, Epicenter can come through now. Chain Frost to cancel it. AUI 2000 didn't get it off. Oh, he forgot about the Chain Frost. Now Boat 7 is gonna go down. Pylite I will fall as well. They wagered a lot on that, and it's up to Eternal Envy to change the tide. But Ravage comes through. Fada didn't get off his ultimate in time. Still, it might not be enough. How on the way out, he gets he ends up killing off the Necrobook, taking a ton of damage for this. Now, searching for AR2000, but he might be too low to continue the fight. Juking through the trees, he does have Aegis, but he could end up dying twice here. Now, Eternal Envy is going to rotate out. Nope, cancels his TP. They want to go again. Moves way over with the Silence. Eternal Envy can't get off a good static link. It's actually cooling down anyway. But Hal's also trapped in the trees for this. Now coming out of the trees, straight onto EE Sama. No, it's not a Sama any longer. We'll end up going down. Does this Brew get to blink out in time? No, Fada, his blink's canceled. He may fall here as well. Dagger cooling down in five seconds. I'll TP out. So four end up falling on Newbie. They lose their Aegis and Cloud9. End up losing, what was that, three heroes? Uh, I not, they I'm lost not the Shadow, Shadow Demon, Demon. Yeah, pretty early. I guess it is three heroes. And that fight, overall, it, it looked super messy at the start with AUI not being able to get his ultimate off. But Bone7 coming in with a very, very huge Wrath of Nature with the Necro, Necro Presence as well. Even though he fell as one of the first on the side of Cloud9, he did his damage. Yeah, that's... Also, they got rid of the Aegis, which is so important when you're up against the Spectre. Uh, there's yeah. still the buyback con to worry about, but... Just forcing Spectre to blow gold on that is, is well worth it. In spite of that, Howe has suddenly got a Reaver. So he gets and pretty much his completed heart. He got a lot out of that fight. and I'm not sure who got the most from Cloud9. I guess it was Fada. Yeah, it looks like he's the one who benefited the most overall. Yeah, I mean, the guy is level 20 right now. And y you saw his primal split. It came in kind of late, or it seemed like it was kind of late. But it was during the reincarnation phase for the Aegis on the side of Hao. And when Mu decided to show himself to save his friend or attempt to give time for Hao to have his spectral dagger available so he can get out of the trapped location, those those brewmasters, the the panda splits, man, they they went nuts on that death prop. It just dropped her from fifteen hundred to zero in like three seconds, just right clicking her with boulder smash. It's crazy because they have Anchor Smash. In theory, they also have Frost Armor, and they should be pretty good against the Brew, but just wasn't there. They'll catch out the Death Prophet mid lane. Burrow Strike's waiting for Moo. He didn't get off his BKB. The timing was absolutely pristine from AUI 2000. There was, I don't even know if there was a chance for it. He was already stunning as the rotation came, but now Banana gets caught. Mana burn, so he can't Shade Frost. Just goes down for free, and they look for more with that additional Blink. Slowing side chain. Cloud9 pursuing Newbie to the ends of the earth, and they just now got the Ravage, but they dropped three heroes for that. EE searching for the fourth, but there's no one there. Hal's off top lane. He just bought a BKB. Now daggering off. As they blink in, they're going to try to go on him, but Fada trapped oh, in the Fada. trees. Oh, sad Fada. Mm -hmm. 
finds himself stuck in the trees for now, but AUI 2000 blinks forward, realizes that there's nothing for him to catch up to. But as I say that, Pilot dies on Hot Pursuit as well. He has the blink dagger available. Looks like they want to scout him out. They're going uh -oh. for it. Oh, Burrow Strike can be coming through momentarily. Epicenter, oh, but how has the BKB? They force it out. Can he get this Pilot die kill? Disruption not available any longer. Haunt was used. He's just dying to auto attacks. How? On the retreat out. Ravage thrown out. It's too late for that. Spectre, no buyback, no Haunt. They'll lose Rapid as well. It's going to be a full team wipe, essentially. Five heroes down. I'll pop the mech to try to survive. But Cloud9, just more heroes at the point of attack, time after time. These mass blink daggers. It's like they always have four, and newbie always have one or two. And they're just not getting that good team fight off any longer. Yeah, it, it really is difficult. Even though you lie on the backs of the Death Prophet huge ultimate with the Exorcism and the Spectre who now has the BKB with the Haunt. Again, it's just not enough compared to the farm and the right clicks coming out of Cloud9. They're actually at a 10k plus deficit on the side of Newbie. Or I guess you would say an advantage in favor of Cloud9. 10k um, plus EXP um, angle. Bone7 I believe just got the Courier. It was hiding up in and the four. trees. I'm not sure who killed it, but it has a... Sh Sorry, what did it have? A Shiva's Guard recipe, I believe? Yeah, Shiva's Guard recipe, and... Let's see, was Death Prophet close to that? Yes, 2700 gold. That was yeah, her yeah, Shiva's. So That's no Shiva's for three minutes now. Nice pickoff. It's actually one of those situations where I would say, um, if it seems too dire, and it might get to that point, then what you want to do is you might just want to buy the recipe again. Because when you sell it back after the courier returns, it's 300. And this Death Prophet really, really needs item progression right now. Because Cloud9's push is rather imminent, I would say. Uh, actually, I'm going to take that back. I think cloud is going to play it safe and try to wait for Roshan. Eternal Envy, just with the... is the, Did he just buy it? I think he just bought this bottle. The, the late game bottle for EE. Yeah. Probably the only team that does this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if it was just because he saw a double damager and then he's like, Yeah, you know what? I could use this for the next fight. Yep, it's it's uh we rely heavily on the double damage as well as the haste run. It really began when the tiny wisp was kind of the flavor of the month, and if you if you ever seen those games where tiny just comes in with a double damage after like one sort of semi team wipe kind of thing happens, tiny and wisp relocate into the enemy base and suddenly two raxes are down. It's, it's from that. <laughs> yeah, it works with clinks as well. Yeah, it's it is just a really nice late game item pickup. The only thing that you sometimes run into is. Like, you, you get that nice rune, and, and then you just don't have an opening to use it, so... It's not it's not a guaranteed win if you when you're running, like, a Razor over, say, a Tidy Wisp, but... It can be the Tide Turner, and it's not like Envy was very close to a big item. If that's, like, an Ags ready to go, then maybe he skips that, but... Just having picked up his BKB, it's... it's why not? Why not, indeed? Well, game will slow down now for Cloud9. They have a solid lead, for sure. 18,000 gold lead, 18,000 experience lead. They don't kill the base that fast, though. They don't have the Razor Ags yet. There's no Refresher on him. They're up against Frost Armor. And they only have a Necrobook on their Prophet. So they've been great in the fights. But I think, like you said, the game will still be pretty slow for them. Unless they get a big team fight win. They'll wait for the next Roche. They'll wait for Envy to continue his item progression. And they probably do look to take this to like that 50-60 minute mark before fully ending the game. If, if they continue to win fights. Yeah. The the story definitely is the fact that they don't want to commit or overextend at all. This is LD. This is another opportunity to get first place in Cloud9. They've been haunted by the second place curse. I think they want to really break it here against the TI champions. Yeah, and let's remember this is a, a one game advantage for newbies. So if Cloud9 gets sloppy and throw this game, they're one game away from just losing the finals. It's not like, yeah. uh, oh well, we played well, but it's only L1. They do not want to throw away what looks to be their game thus far. Patience will be a virtue this game for sure. And you know what? The double damage actually pops because of the timer. So Eternal Envy will look to secure himself another rune. And this time, the Dota Gods have blessed him with an Invis. Didn't he, isn't it more like he blessed himself with an Invis? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Dude. Sometimes, well, I, you know, your faith is not so strong and you can't, you can't recall every, every detail. That's okay. Don't, don't forget who our Lord and Savior is, Claire. <laughs> you, you of all people should know that. But see, Sorry. this is him having mercy, because if he was a merciless god, he would have just said, screw the new rules of Dota, I'm giving myself a second double damage rune, even though that's not possible. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's true. In E, some of we trust, and in Cloud9, the trust seems to be on Roshan as Bone7. He has his treants scouting out, and it looks like the second batch of treants are coming out. I would imagine he wants to put one back into the pit, because I think the respawn time is... It could be is right it now. right now? No, it's in two minutes. But oh. that, that's the minimum, so that's the 8-minute mark. Well, I, 
where you draw those circles around the, the clock moves as you move your camera. But yeah, that's the eight minute mark. It, it could be anywhere from zero to three minutes more than that. So, so it'll be a ten minute Roshan, but I, I don't know if this really changes too much for the upcoming fight. The one thing to keep an eye on is buybacks. And your Spectre has one, your Death Prophet has one. Two more heroes about to secure their buyback in Cloud9, and I imagine we'll see at least some of them save for it, as they have a tier one bottom right near that new Roche pit, and it would seem crazy not to when you're up against Spectre. Actually, that's a very interesting thing you bring up. Normally in 40 minute games, you don't see tier one towers being up, simply put, on either side. Because when tier one towers stay alive on either side past like the 20, 25 minute mark, Usually that team kind of just wins at that point. But I guess it does have something to do with the patch as well. Smoke gank from Newbie. Moose got the frost armor on him. He's sitting on 30 armor. Pretty damn tanky to be honest. Yeah. But it's all about if he gets that BKB off and they're going to smoke a Cloud9 as well. And it might be Both just the smoke. right timing. Who gets the jump here? Nobody. Everyone's still in Viz. This could work out great for Cloud9. They're going to breach high ground, but they're waiting for Fada. He gets the blink in. The Burl Strike's there. Fada's fast on the draw with his BKB as well. And so too is AUI, but with everyone BKB, there's really nothing for AUI to do. He just has to wait these out. Wait for a better opportunity. Moo charging back into the fray now. Banana's the one who's caught out. Throws out a chain frost. That's not going to bounce. He ends up going down. Meanwhile, Moo pursued out now by the Brewmaster split. They go back on to how they'll kill off the Spectre. Has buyback. Has BKB. Has saved it for round two of this fight. But if he waits too long, then he's fighting without a Death Prophet. Oh, buyback on. Rabbit's going to unload with the Ravage, and AUI 2000, his epicenter comes in, didn't get off the full damage on everybody though, and Hal charges in, smacks down a Turtle Envy, looks for an additional kill, the Spectre Haunt buyback, securing four, probably securing a full wipe here, Fada, not much he could do, even through the Assault Caress, just chop down, gotta respect the Haunt buyback, Claire, really gotta respect yeah, that. You really do, it's something that you always have to pay attention to, and now, Newbie, they're gonna try to put themselves in the pit, I'm not too sure if they can actually take it. One of the things is uh, Cloud9 can not only buy back on some of their heroes as well, but if, if it's like a Bone 7 buying back, you could just push the top lane. And also, they don't have enough damage, I don't think. And as I say that, Roshan's actually dropping quite decently, but not very fast though. Yeah, they're gonna back. They just... I mean, that was pretty damn slow to be honest. Like, yeah. They have no right click without the death profit. Still worth the buyback though on the Spectre for sure. I mean, if without that haunt, Mu was dead, and what would happen is Cloud9 would force buybacks and then they would just back up. And Roshan will be another another objective coming up like two minutes later. It will be interesting to see if they if they can secure the Roshan anyway. They still have that tier one up as we were talking about, so especially with the new pit, this is like directly on top of it. And with Cloud9 having this many blinks and Prophet being able to TP in, basically their whole team can just sneak into the pit. And that's what they'll do now. Bone Seven will go in, he'll start the fight off. He's gonna hex after breaking the, the Lincoln Sphere with the, the modern burn of the Necro Minion, and they'll probably all just blink in here. Highlight Eye dropping on Observer Ward. They'll TP on the Razor. Well, Eternal Envy can't blink in. He's going to have to no. just waddle into the pit. And this will be... S I think it will be... No, actually, they're, yeah, the Ward doesn't scouted. see it. He'll now they scouted. will. It's unfortunate for him, but... Roshan is still... It, it's going to fall pretty fast from this point on. I would give it another 15 seconds or so. And then... They will acquire the Cheese and they will acquire the Aegis, but... I think it's... I think it's fairly obvious at this point that Eternal Envy, some of his deaths are really costing him because his items, they're they're simply just not there. I mean, you bar the drums, and what happens is he has this, he has this Shiva's guard, and he has the BKB, which is still on nine second charge, which is pretty good with 4K in the bank, and now the E just to fall back on. But in terms of being able to take these team fights, as long as Spectre has buyback, I'm not I'm not sure if this Razor can survive round two. They're going on how they've got an Epicenter ready to go. They'll start with a Burrow Strike now a Purge. How has BKB, but he doesn't want to use it. He's going to try for a TP out. Is there anyone else in down? Nope. He'll make his way oh, out. Oh, and who showed himself at top? Yeah, they're all scattering. He does have a BKB TP. Cloud9 don't have an answer for that, but... Oh, see. Bone7. Is he going to get baited, though? Rapids here. There's a lot of heroes actually here. I'm not sure they want to commit onto this Death Prophet. She's got BKB. Now we'll use it. Exorcism can turn this one. Is she going? No, she doesn't want to. Just BKBs and backs off. Uh, hey Claire, since we have a minute, let me ask you, what what do you think about Aegis on Razor? Like to me, it would seem the cheese would be b the better choice because you don't get your ult back when you when you die. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things too. But honestly, like this game, who else would you put it on? Is is kind of like my concern. Yeah, maybe. The I don't think the panda does anything with the Aegis coming back either because he's a melee hero, and most of the time they'll just have some sort of DLT sitting right on top of you, so you're probably not going to be able to blink out. And yeah, it's it's honestly it's it is one of those games where the Sages is 
not as effective as, as you would like it to be. But it's still a necessity against the Spectre right now, who has the buyback. That's true. Yeah, this this maybe you just save your BKB ultimate and and wait for the Spectre buyback haunt to, to yeah. really go to work. It's kind of just pick the lesser poison at this point. And well, newbie, their poison is too extremely strong. Like in carries getting their farm out. Rabbit's building is refresher, and this could be scary for Cloud Nine, who have a lot of BKBs that are starting to wear thin. Seven second BKB on Fada, a fight or two more. That's down to five seconds. Same for AUI two thousand and. Well, Eternal Envy, he's at a 9 second BKB. He generally gets this quite late on every hero, and it was one of... It wasn't really that late, it's just that he hasn't picked anything else up since then. But Yeah, I'm, you know, I haven't taken a look into the net worth chart for some time, but now that I look at it, I'm starting to really get worried for Cloud9. Because of some of the items that they've locked themselves into, whether it's the drums in the Razor early game, and walking around the map, or AUI going straight into BKB and then bail the Discord instead of going for, I don't know, maybe another supportive item. Like sheep stick possibly, which is not which is not traditional for a sand king, but nevertheless a possibility for this game. Just just many things like yeah, it's... or or like he sold his rate of the kill, and he did. Then he bought a bottle, and yeah, it's a it's... lot of gold wasted that could be the makings of like an actual an eggs or a refresher. Yeah, like honestly, they don't really have real hard items on the side of new like on the side of Cloud Nine that newbie do. So. Yeah, buyback. Oh, no, they want to take this fight here. Buyback status. There is no buyback on Spectre for a minute. Maybe that's what they're counting on. They go in with the Burrow to initiate upon Moo. He gets hexed up as well. He's got a BKB. They forced to F him out. He can BKB on Exorcism. They're just trying to buy time. Spectre was disrupted, but then just retreats. And with these illusions chasing Eternal Envy and the squad out, they're going to have to back. They cannot continue the high ground push from here. Just, just fighting these illusions is killing off Envy. Man, he almost lost his life. Well, his first yeah. life. He does have the second. So I, I do realize that that was a pretty big overextend by Cloud9 going so deep into the base and of course they only got out because they had these long BKBs. But as you mentioned earlier, these charges are slowly simmering down and more importantly, I think that fight was a good indicator of the fact that Newbie's team fight overall is just getting stronger and stronger. Like when you take that kind of damage and granted you're still under tier 3, tier 4 towers so it does, it does kind of make more sense that way. But Mu didn't even pop his exorcism, which means that with the shivas and the exorcism and possibly a well-timed BKB, this guy can run down anybody right now. Oh, so I'm yeah. starting to fear for Cloud9 as Hal's actually trying to run down. Oh, somebody. Hal, he's getting angry. He does have Rabbit in tow and... Okay, they don't quite want to commit. They were trying to bait him in a bit too far. But this is... I mean, the key thing is they didn't use Ravage. They didn't use Haunt. They didn't use Exorcism, Chain Frost, Mystic Flare. And they don't have their second Ravage yet. And Cloud9 still lost like two-thirds of all their lives with their BKBs being used. And they did damage the tower, but most of the tower damage was not from the BKBs. It was before that chase into the base, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly starting to worry very, very dearly for Cloud9 here. They're, they're not in a good situation. This is quite the predicament. Okay, so if you're in newbie shoes, what, what are you looking for now? Your Spectre's about to get Haunt, but you do have to consider saving for buyback. Lich is gone. He sold his headdress, went back for a buckler. Okay, um, I guess just deciding they don't need double mech. They're going to get Refresher soon on Rabbit is the other really big item pickup. And this Aegis will be wearing off fairly soon. Do you just fight before the next Roshan? Do you just try to win the game there? Do you wait for the next Aegis? Put yourself inside um, the head of Newbie. What's, what's the game plan now? Honestly, the ideal situation is they somehow find a way to push out the lanes to the river and then have a smoke going through their jungle to like the mid lane or something. Because most, I mean, Cloud9, they're probably going to camp themselves in the enemy jungle. This is how Cloud9 takes map control, and then that usually gives access to the enemy mid lane as well as their safe lane. So, that's the ideal scenario, and it looks like they want to set themselves up for that right now, but I think the safest approach would just be waiting for the next Roshan spawn, and then just forcing a fight there, because you know for sure that Cloud9 is going to try to take that Rosh before they try to push high ground. They can't reach high ground right now, and I think that last engagement, however overcommitted it was out of them, really gave a good tell that they cannot fight up against the uh, newbie's lineup in high ground. Yeah, and for newbie, they're probably hoping for a longer Roshan respawn so they have time to get the heart and have buyback, which How is closing in on right now. And that might even allow Rabbit to risk a refresher if he doesn't want to save for his own buyback. They'll push out the top lane is four. They send How towards mid. There's still tier two in all three lanes and, and still that tier one bottom. It's a lot of gold kind of out there on the map for newbie who are down 10,000, but let's say they take a Roche, they get three or four towers off of that and win a team fight. This graph will be not only even, but probably just straight up in their favor. So, yeah, a lot hangs on this next Roche and, and potential team fight.
Mm -hmm. And now Rabbit. I guess still two pieces away. Does he have anything on the courier that helps him towards the refreshing? No. Looks like they're both taking it slow. Both Hao and Rabbit. When it comes to even farming their own side of the map, I'm, I'm just checking from their vision point of view. And they have a really, really nice small triangle set up just under the river AoE. But they actually don't see any of Cloud9 on the map right now. And that's because Cloud9, again, they're just farming up the enemy jungle and pushing out all the lanes as best as they can. Without showing too much presence on the lanes. Because they know as long as they're off the map on the, against Newbie, Newbie are scared. And you can see that kind of coming out here with the two supports camping the Spectre, arguably one of the most tankiest heroes in the game. And of course, Mu, even he doesn't want to breach out too far. So both teams kind of playing to their cards as they're given right now. Refresher is about to come out for the Tide. The Heart is about to come out for the Spectre. And Roshan is uh, at least one minute off a potential respawn. Could be as long as four. If it's four, they're going to have these items and probably buyback. At least on the Spectre, they'll have the buyback. Maybe, well, maybe not on Tide, but... Maybe one or two other heroes will. For now, just split pushing. Trying to get the lanes going the way. Refresher purchased. Rabbit, nothing besides that really in the bank. Yeah. And you know what? Cloud9 is actually assembling his four here. I wonder what their plan is. Looks like the, there's some pings coming out to the new ward location. I think they might want to consider dewarding it. And yeah, AOI 2000 does have the champ. Pilot dies and poisoning it as well. So, Look at this. There's a basher for Fada. He's going for the hard carry Brewmaster late game. Abyssal Blade incoming, and he's just purchased his Relic. It's an Abyssal Blade Brew. Oh yeah, and he's... no buybacks. I was actually thinking maybe Refresher, but... I mean, he does have Blink Dagger, and he's probably going to be the Initiator, so... The ba the Abyssal will work. Let's just hope they don't stack stuns, you know? Because the way I see it happening, Bone Seven's going to try to Hex the same target. So they really have to clarify that beforehand. Courier on the way back, it is carrying a big payload. How it will pick up his heart and retreat. He's got plenty of gold for a buyback, and... They even send Eternal Envy into the mid lane. He pops his ultimate, then does he really stick around too much longer? He's got a Fada behind him, does have some backup, and perhaps trying to bait Newbie to leave that base, but they're content to just hug the high ground. Spectre Illusion's getting disrupted. They'll fight it out, and nobody really committing right now. Just the lane's getting pushed in, and any second now. Oh, unfortunately for them, it is an 11-minute rush respawn timer. The Almost the full duration. Mook has the next item, too, if he wants it. I he almost has yeah. a refresher. I'm not sure if he wants to risk it, not saving for buyback, but yeah, let's see what he goes for. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what he would go for here as well. I mean, refresher seems like the obvious choice, but there's a slight possibility he might want to go for a sheepstick, which which wouldn't be as good, honestly. The refresher would be the best thing. So, as we say that newbie is smoked up, they are prepared for the incoming Roshan attempt out of Cloud Nine, but little do they know that Roshan is not spawned yet. And as you said. Looking to spawn at the very latest moment, the 11 minute mark. But how? At 27,000 net worth, he's definitely the biggest hero on the map and looking like large in charge. Large and in charge and with a second life to boot. So, well, they'll go into the pit. They'll be sad to see that the Roche isn't up. Do they have any more smokes? Nothing in the shop and nothing on their heroes. They kind of, I wouldn't say they gamble necessarily, but they're just hoping that the Roche respawns at that time. And unfortunately, they're off, so... If they want to go in, they, I feel like they're almost strong enough just to walk into the pit anyway, but, well, we'll see. I if... think so, too. I think so, too. But, I mean, this, despite that potency, you know, I think they really have to respect Cloud9 here because Cloud9 has been taking some really good fights. And as we know with this patch, the change to the pit means that there's so many angles that you can approach the pit. It's, it's actually a really nice place to throw, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> it's a yeah. dangerous place, man. You've got a lot of angles to come from, not to mention even hills for this direction, like, yeah. Pretty much any angle you can approach it from. It's surrounded by more access paths than the old pit, which was just like the one the one way in. And then the surrounding This really trailer. does feel more like a pit, though. Before, it just felt like a dire cave. It's like a death cage. <laughs> it feels yeah, like, yeah, yeah, feels like right. an MMA cage, almost. <laughs> Hell in a <the> cell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he who enters the pit shall not leave. Yeah. Oh, this, is a, this could be the big item. Eternal Envy now has double BKB. Double Shiva's guard, and most importantly, the double ultimate. Yeah, he's looking pretty strong now. He still has the cheese as well, so you can excuse one of his slots being missed for that. Simultaneously, Mu is saving for the buyback. He's got 5.6k gold and the Perseverance. All right, no, he is buying his Refresher, but I'm not sure if it will get here. Okay, it will get here in time. They're still scouting. Now they know Roche is up, and it's up to Bone 7 to draw Newbie back. But the issue is always going to be they have a Spectre. So they could just send him to defend top lane, and they can still remain four near the pit if they want. But they may not do that. They're actually running all the way back, because they're worried about 
as soon as this w one hero runs away, I guess, the things just go south. And you see Banana just casually dropping Chain Frost to D-Push. This is mm -hmm. fine if you've got the level 3 ultimate, but it's a long cooldown at the level 2. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks, kind of, because after that creep wave, he would have had the level 3. And I guess at that point, he might not, not have needed so badly. But just the unfortunate timing for him, regardless. Creep wave at the mid lane, just right near the river. Oh, Cloud9 hangs back. Refresher's out for everybody. That's a, a three refresher game so far. And if it goes on much longer, we may see one on the... Maybe even the brew. Maybe even Fada goes back for one for the, the double abyssal blade to work with. And not too much of the double split. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. I, I really do think refresher is viable as like the one of the first two items on Brewmaster. Really interesting item on brew for sure. Still nobody going into that pit though. They do not want to take a risk. A lot at stake, and it's a Boots of Travel for Hal. Generally not an item we see on Spectre. No, certainly not, but I think uh, as you were talking about the uh, Nature's Profit push earlier, this is definitely what he wants here, because... Oh, um, Moo. Caught out in the river. This could be our big fight. Disrupted the start. He's going to have to BKB as he runs, but Envy's gotten onto him. He's stealing his damage. Stealing a lot of it with the double Razor Holy Ultimate. Smokes. Just get shredded, but he'll buy back now. And that was two Razor ults used. If they fight, and these run out, they're in a lot of trouble. The haunt will come through. No, no haunt yet. Just just staggering in. Chasing out Eternal Envy. He's walking into Zap range. Ravage number one to come through. Eternal Envy didn't get off oh, his BKB. Man. Double Ravage. There's no buyback on the Razor. Where's the DPS going to come from now? Perhaps at UA2000. The Epicenter does what it can. They'll Cyclone up the Spectre. Deleting him from the fight for a few seconds. While Banana waits for the Chain Frost. Five seconds and counting. Three seconds and counting. Get that Chain Frost up, Banana. He just can't do it. But who does it even matter? Does it matter at all? There's no Razor. No Razor ultimates. Everybody low to Fada. Nobody dead. He'll end up dropping. Oh, dead for 100. The Bones have an ultimate. Almost saving the fight. Oh, but regen rune. How finds a regen? Oh, what a time for a regen. Buyback will come out on your Sand King. The Brewmaster's bought back as well. But it's a Brewmaster who lacks a Primal Split. A Sand King who lacks an Epicenter. And Bone 7 who's just not at the base yet. He's trying to split push. They managed to cancel that regen rune on Hal. And they may play the safe and back off. They're going to try for it. Disruption comes right as the Burrow Strike's there. Missed timing from Cloud9, which means Hal just charges in, but he gets hexed. He tries to retreat up to the right. He does have the buyback haunt ready to go. He's going to use the haunt now, and perhaps jumps the other direction of the fight. Where is he going to go? No. Just using the haunt. Now he ports it at the last second, forcing onto Fada, who, remember, bought back. This could be a dieback from him. Looking for more kills. They'll kill off the Shadow Demon. They go back. Kill off the Brew as well. Cloud9 just crumbling. Didn't take a late of Rex. They get creeps to the base. It looks like Newbie will be too low to go in, and how definitely gambled there, using the haunt when he was low, not saving for the safe buyback haunt, but it pays off, Claire. He lives, he gets a bunch of gold, now 13-6 and 12, 32k net worth, and that that fear tip upwards on the graph, I mean, it's just a straight jump at this point for Newbie. Cloud9, self-destructed at this stage. Yeah, huge spike going against the favor of Cloud9 here, and how still farming up the creep wave that was coming for the push. He's now got 8,000 gold in LD. That's guaranteed six slot item with the buyback. This is this is the time for newbie to do something. Panda's still down for over a minute, so they can force out the next objective however they'd like, and it looks like they want to go back into the pit here. They don't have any exorcism, so this will be a slow rush, but they're tanky enough to do it. How? Just with the heart. HP pull, now frost armor on him. It'll be slow progress, but it will be progress, and... The spice time for all their ultimates to cool down. The double death profit ult should be ready for the next fight if they just back off after this rush. The Spectre now with 8.5k gold drops his drums on the floor. How gonna pick up the Aegis? Shiva's was used by Mu just to ensure that Pilot Eye did not attempt for a blink in to steal anything. And well, they will grab his drums. Banana will be the, the courier for this one as they retreat back. Yeah, honestly, I actually have to question that pick up on the Aegis by the Spectre. I feel like right now, these two cores, they just want to make the most out of themselves in the fights instead of relying on deaths. And I understand with Spectre, it's the best energy because the dispersion will allow her to do damage regardless. But you still have buyback con. Yeah, but what, I feel like she should have actually used that 6 slot as a refresher. And she would have double BKB, double Manta, and double Haunt in the team fight. Yeah, and if you want, you can even leave it like potentially in your stash. Just use your refresher right away, have a buyback, or uh, sorry, use your Haunt right away. Have a buyback, just grab the refresher from your stash, use it, and then go right back in, so... Oh, right, that, that is true. That is true. It could I, be I really nice for you don't need It could be a seventh right. item. 
Oh, they're looking for the jump in. Eternal Envy pops the Shivas. They'll hex up Mu to start the fight. Working on the Death Prophet has a BKB though and howls into the front line. Straight onto Pilot Igos. Gets disrupted. Eternal Envy doing quite a bit of damage with his ult double ultimate. Ravage will come through and the Spectre getting controlled for a time. BKB's there. It's not quite enough how. Still is the Aegis though. They're going to have a round two and Eternal Envy has fallen. E.E. Sama, no buyback for 900 gold, which means not for this fight. Chainfrost still a-bouncing, Rabbit still chasing, he's got a secondary Ravage, doesn't even need it yet, just the gush coming through, Cloud9 pursued into their base, the Haunt now as well, diving towards the well, on to Bone7, looking for additional kills, they'll find one on the south side of the fight, Pylai die gonna fall, Cloud9, they've struggled so hard just to find that first place, second place of WEC, so many other events of the past, and, well, they're not out of this series yet, but this does look like Throne. No Razor still. Ravage is online. They're going for the throne. Newbie. Time's over for Cloud9 if they can't hold the line here. Fada has no ultimate ready. He'll go in with the Blade Clap. And then that's pretty much it. House Hex, but not taking damage during this time. Just try to distract, but not enough of a distraction. Tier 4 is about to drop. There's no hold here for Cloud9. And that's it. GG. With the winner's bracket advantage, Newbie are now one win away from even more money. <laughs> As though TI4 wasn't enough. They're looking yeah. at $350,000 with one more win. Wow, I have to say I'm st still slightly in shock and disbelief at how fast they just turned the game right there. Uh, just from the Roshan engagement overall, Cloud9 not getting what they found in the pit and of course getting the entire fight of them turned on. And after that, I mean, look at the Razor's farm and in that last fight, he didn't cast the second instance of his ultimate, Eye of the Storm, even after the refresh. So a slight blunder, which I don't think had much impact because again, Newbie's net worth under two cores was just way too large for Cloud9 to overcome at that stage. Yeah, you go back to some of those deaths from Eternal Envy, like when he just solo wet walked up a hill to farm the enemy yeah. ancients and they they were super costly for sure. Yeah. I think they I think came he, back he to really haunt needed them. to focus himself this game because if you look at the lineup, I mean despite the wonderful job that Papada did with that initiation with the Abyssal Blade on the Death Prophet, like he still really is the solo carry in the Razor this game. Yeah, I'm with you there and well for Cloud9 I, what the admins initially told me was the players would move to the main stage uh, later today when the series was on match point, which it is now since Newbie take this, so I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate. I, there's been a lot of conflicting information, but if that is true, we might have a fairly long pause, so uh, I will update you guys as soon as I know, but for now, what we do know is Newbie is one win away from taking WCA 2014. I'm LD, he's Clairvoyance. We'll take a quick break, guys. Well, maybe not quick. We'll take a break. We'll take some kind of break, and then we'll come back and resume the Grand Finals. Newbie, on Match Point. Stay tuned.